Hello, welcome to another short Bible message coming to you from the church. You normally meet at Union Hall in Broad Street, Townbeath. Unfortunately, because of the current lockdown due to the coronavirus that is sweeping our country and many another country too, we cannot hold any of our services in the church building. However, we are pleased to send out these short messages from time to time and trust they will be a blessing to you as you too are shut down and locked into your own home with very severe limitations. My name is David Muir and while we are all locked down, I was just wondering how people engage themselves and use their time to good advantage. Well, I don't watch, watch much television at any time, and that has not changed at the present. However, sometimes when I just put it on and flick through the different channels, it seems that there's an endless cook, there's endless cooking programs to watch, and they're on several of the channels and TV stations. What I do know about them all is there is one common practice of all the chefs, and that is that they continually taste the food during their preparation. They comment on the flavors and the wonderful tastes. And when cooked, they all love to indulge with great relish in the finished dish. And they are constantly expressing their delight in the process whether while preparing, cooking, or eating the completed meal. They are so pleased with their product and it's always delicious, full of flavor, color, and when we look, it sounds and looks satisfying. Well, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about food, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. There are numerous references in the Gospels to the Lord Jesus talking about food. I just mentioned two of the more familiar. First, in John's Gospel, chapter 6, the account is recorded when Jesus took five barley loaves and two small fishes and performed the miracle by which he multiplied those to feed 5,000 people in the wilderness. And it's often referred to, even today, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. And also in that same section of the Bible, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The second I would like to refer to is when the prodigal son returned home. The father fatted, killed the fatted calf and made a great feast for the boy. Now, I really don't want to dwell on either of these sections of the New Testament that I've highlighted, but rather I would like to go to a particular verse from the Bible tucked away in the Psalms in the Old Testament, Psalm chapter 34 and verse 8. And it says this, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We can all say from much experience, food is no use unless we taste it. Eat it and it becomes part of us for our health and well-being. I could look at food and admire it all day but unless I eat it, it will do me no good. I must take it for myself. You know, that is so like the message of the Bible concerning the Lord Jesus Christ in particular. One needs to appropriate the message of the Bible for oneself and personally believe in the perfect salvation offered by the Lord Jesus um, before it can be of any benefit or blessing to oneself. I could read the Bible every day 
and all day. And I could read it from Genesis to Revelation, or I could admire the perfect life of the Lord Jesus Christ while he was here upon this earth. But unless I make it my own by faith and belief in his sacrificial death at Calvary, it will never fit me for heaven. And I will miss out the joy and the blessing of trust and faith in this life and the assurance of eternal life in the Father's house in heaven after this life and death is past. Like a good recipe or a particular tasty meal, it's always good to have a recommendation from someone who has already enjoyed the meal or has tried the recipe to success. And I thought, how like the Christian life again? Maybe you've never really thought about spiritual matters or Christian things in times past. You've been too busy with work and family life and holidays and general activities that have filled our lives to the full. But in these days, we're locked in and we may have more time to stop and ponder what is life all about? Well, one thing we are sadly learning afresh and again is that it's rather fragile and it's very transient. With that thought in our mind, I would like to highlight from the Bible one or two people who readily would commend the Lord Jesus Christ to us following their personal account of faith in the Lord Jesus. But first, before I go there, I would like to share a personal testimony with you. I was only 12 years old, but a boy, when these matters became real to me. I wasn't a bad boy, but I did realize that I wasn't right with God, and my sin question had to be dealt with. And so as a boy of 12, I just asked his forgiveness, placed my trust and my faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. And I got the assurance of faith in him. On the other hand, my father was 25 years of age, a young adult man, when he made his decision to believe for himself in the finished sacrificial work of Jesus. And indeed, my wife's grandfather was 74 years of age when he came to faith in Jesus Christ. So what I'm highlighting is, it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of personal decision. That's the most vital of all questions in life regarding our faith and belief in the finished work of Jesus at Calvary's cross. The big point is, I must take it for myself. I must make it personal, no matter what age or stage of life I am. It's again, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, let me come back to consider with you a couple of these personal testimonies I mentioned I would raise from the Bible. The first I would raise is concerning the great Apostle Paul of the New Testament. He recounted his personal conversion to Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus in an amazing um, intervention of God in the life of that man. And three times over in his writings later on, he rehearsed that experience that was so major and vital in his life. And you know, each time he rehearsed it, it became sweeter and more thrilling that God should forgive a man like him. He even called himself the chief of sinners. No wonder. Our little scripture verse for today says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and blessed is the one 
that trusts in him. On one occasion, Jesus healed a man who was born blind, and certain leaders argued how that he could be uh, healed with this wonderful miracle, and so who should get the credit for it? And they were arguing about this, and the man says, look, I don't know who should get the credit, but one thing I do know, that once I was blind, now I can see. He was in no doubt that Jesus did a wonderful miracle on his behalf, and he knew it full well, and no one could take the personal blessing away from him. When anyone puts their trust and personal faith in the Lord and the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus, there's no doubt of the reality of the precious decision and commitment. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Some time ago, an old woman in the highlands of Scotland was once asked if she enjoyed salvation by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She answered, oh, I, I trusted him a long time ago, but you know something? It's better felt than tilt. That's true. Sometimes that is just exactly how one feels about the whole thing. It's a wonderful experience to have trust and faith in all of life's journey through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I commend to you the Lord Jesus to be your personal saviour. And remember, you need to taste and you need to come personally and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the one that trusts in him. May the Lord Jesus bless you as you think about this little message from the Bible. I would just like to conclude my little talk to you this today by quoting one or two verses from a well-known hymn. It says this, Thy truth unchanged has ever stood. Thou savest those that on thee call. To them that seek thee, thou art good. To them that find thee, all in all. We taste thee, O thou living bread, and long to feast upon thee still. We drink of thee, the fountain head, and thirst our souls from thee to fill. O Jesus, ever with us stay. Make all our moments calm and bright. Chase the dark night of sin away, shed o'er the world thy holy light. Thank you for listening, and may the Lord bless you indeed.